Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Sean Vinay's nice back here with Small Heat Rock and today we're taking a look at Good Lock for the Android One UI on Samsung Quick Tips. Now, this here is, a, even though it's called Samsung Quick Tips, this video will be long because it's an overall review of what the Good Lock has to offer on the Note 9 now. Uh, well, Android One UI period. So again, this is running Android UI actually on the Note 9. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, the screen was keep getting dirty from touching it. I've already cleaned the screen once. So don't, you know, if you see fingerprints, please don't kill me, but let's go ahead and get into the video. So uh, if you're not familiar with Good Lock, all you wanna do is actually just go ahead and go to the Galaxy Store, search for it, Good Lock. It's not called Good Lock 2018 and one, obviously, because we're in the year 2019, but there it is. You're gonna get it from the Galaxy Store. So let's go ahead and actually uh, check, open it up and check it out. All right, so this is good lock. For some odd reason, it's not following the night mode theme I actually have in place. Let's go ahead and make sure that is on. So yeah, night mode is on. Turn it off. Now let's turn it back on and see if that works. Nope, still didn't work. So good lock does not, it does not talk to the system in regards to night mode on or off. On or off. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is lock star. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, just from an actual user perspective, uh, the only one I really, really use is Task Changer, maybe, it depends what they have in store, um, and Routines. I use Routines heavily. Everything else, I really don't even do too much. So, but just you know, for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and look at Lockstar. Now, what Lockstar is, it's pretty much a way for you to change and customize your lock screen. For example, if you wanna add a whole new setup, we could, by just hitting the plus symbol. You can actually change the background, but we're using the system wallpaper right now, so we're not gonna do that. Uh, but we can change the background if you wanted to, and the item visibility, what items you wanna be shown. So if you want the, uh, the music controller to be shown, you can have that on there. The lock screen status, if you wanna show that the screen is actually locked, you actually have a lock button as well if you want that on there. We're gonna hit turn that off though, we don't need that. And you also have help text up top, swipe screen to unlock. That's if you need that, you know, put in place for yours. So now, let's like, say if you actually wanna move any of these things around, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit edit. And now you can actually move this on the screen where you see fit, however it makes sense to you to kind of go with your customized, you know, to make your phone your own. So for example, if you wanted this all the way up, like you only put it in the areas that's green though. So you can't put it up here, but you can put it like smack down the center here and it actually help you out with guidelines. You can actually move this down if you wanted to. You can keep this right here in the middle if you wanted to. And then when you hit save, you click on it, it's gonna apply it. And now what happens is, once you turn it off, you're gonna see your new lock screen, you'll customize it how you want it. So as you guys see, we have the swipe here to unlock. We got the time here. You have your swipe to unlock here, the time. You have your mute control down here if you actually listen to music. So yeah, now it's something to kind of keep in mind. This will not work if you're still requesting to use system clock. If you want this to work, you actually have to turn that off. Um, and just down here, just in case you guys forgot, you, uh, you, have to, you actually have to turn that off. Now, another thing you wanna take a look at is unlock type. You got swipe, swipe up, swipe down, swipe left, swipe right, swipe right, whichever way uh, works best for you, what's more comfortable for you. And then you have app shortcuts integration. So if you actually wanted to double touch to actually get to that, uh, to that app, or if you just wanna touch it. So we'll just do double touch, right? So let's say if we put any apps on there, if we had any apps down here at the bottom of the screen, we actually just double tap it and get to it. So I'm gonna turn that off because I don't even use apps on my screens in the first place anyway. So but it's leave Samsung default. All right, moving right along. Now we're gonna go to Quick Star. Now, for those who don't know, Quick Star is actually your quick panel. And we're gonna be able to change the colors, the custom uh, custom themes, how we see fit. So here, I'm gonna turn it on. Now, they already have some put in place for you already to kind of give you guys an idea, just in case you kind of need help with some creativity, you don't know how to do it, something that kind of spark your interest. So here, let's go ahead and choose this one here. We're gonna hit apply. So now when we pull this down, it is that same color and that same layout. Now, this is really cool for people who were doing to customize their phone to their own. And what's dope about this, you actually have even more control on this part itself. So what you can do is, so what you wanna do is, you wanna hold down on it, you wanna hit edit, and now we can change everything about this that we don't like. So if we wanna make it, go, uh, if we wanna make it a little bit more transparent we can do that we can keep it like around 50 percent we can change the background color maybe you want like a blue instead of that uh purple teal um or lavender whatever you want to call it you got the blur effect and you also have a blur level a blur level amount so right now if we wanted to turn it like if we wanted to this, this is how it looks at one this is how it looks at one I'm about to edit now it's gonna hit bump that up to five all right hit apply now this is how the background blur looks now as you can see it's a real crazy bokeh effect going on now what i am curious to see how does this work with night mode let's see if that even if that's even a thing looks like we found our first bug ladies and gentlemen it is all right let's see let's see what happened so you could turn night mode on but it doesn't do anything so let's go ahead and turn that back off all right 
Uh, you also have visibility to the icons to show like which ones you want up here because it actually affects this up here too. So maybe you want your alarm to always show, you can have that pop up, the volume indicator, the airplane mode, the Wi-Fi, we already got Wi-Fi on. Maybe we want the Mobile G3 uh, data to always stay up there to let it know how signal is looking, a Wi-Fi status. We can have all that turned on, battery icon, Bluetooth, is that if that's active, NFC, if that's active, you have all this turned on up here in your quick panels and you actually see them up here too. Now there's, obviously there's a limit, you can't just bombard this with everything, but when you pull it down, you see all the icons that you probably were missing. So, now me, I'm gonna turn this off because I just don't really, I like the night mode so far, I really like the black theme that got kind of going on with the Android One UI. So I'm gonna leave that B. I'm actually gonna turn, all right, my night mode's still on, good. So I turned it off. All right, let's go ahead and go back to good lock. So actually, one thing I did forget to show you, they actually have a notification pop up. So what happens is you show a notification pop up window button in the notification menu when swiping down uh, from the notification. So right now, if we wanted to, if we got a notification, right, and we wanted to actually change that to like a little small pop up window, let me just show you guys YouTube. We're gonna play one of my videos or something. And now you guys will see, you can actually turn it to a little pop-up window, pop window. See, just like that. Let's go ahead and close that out. Now we're gonna take a look at Task Changer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. As you guys can see, it's not in use. Turn that on. Now we can choose which type of care style we want. And before we do that, I'm gonna show you the difference. So here, right now, this is our current layout. When we wanna do uh, change apps or anything like that, you swipe up on the right-hand side. Works just fine, right? You can also switch, swipe apps and you swipe to the right, kind of peruse through like this, okay? Let's go ahead and turn this on. Now let's go ahead and change the layout type. Let's go ahead and go to grid. Now I wonder if you still have that same effect or the same uh, capability or usability when you are using good lock as far as scrolling through apps when you swipe to the right. And as you guys can see, the bar is coming up, but you cannot do that anymore. So just keep that in mind. You will lose function the functionality of doing a uh, quick task changer if you decide to go with Task Changer um, and from Good Lock. But this is how it looks with the grid. Some of you like this, some of you find it a little bit more organized. Uh, you can actually still put a background effect on it if you want the blur, see it blurred at the background. So, very quick, nothing too crazy, very simple to do. I'm gonna actually, actually turn that off. All right, now, this is my favorite one. This is the one I use the most. This is the one I can really, really talk to you guys about in depth. So, routines. Now, with routines, this is pretty dope because you can set it up with your phone um, you give your phone a specific condition, and once that phone meets that condition, a certain action will take place. So for example, let's take a one I already got set up. Now anytime my phone is charging, I'll, my always on display will always pop up, so therefore I don't have to turn it on, because pretty much, if I'm actually using my phone, I got my watch, on, I don't really need my always display always on. Now granted, they fixed that in Android One UI, it's only on when you like double tap the screen, or you can leave it on permanently if you want to, but for me, it felt like the most convenient feature for before I even got One UI was to have anytime I was charged. So anytime my phone is charged in the condition, the action that was go is gonna take place is it's always gonna turn on, always on display. Now, another nifty feature that you guys may wanna use is for Wi-Fi home, and then I'll show you one for the car. Now, for Wi-Fi home, I gotta set up with anytime I'm near my house, because it gives you the address, you can actually put in your address around that proximity, and then it's gonna automatically turn on Wi-Fi and connect to my network. Now, you can actually already have this set up through Wi-Fi settings already before you even got good luck, but just something to kind of keep in mind. Then you also got music. Now for me, I use YouTube Music. YouTube Music no longer pops up and automatically play like it did on Google Play Music. So I got a setup where anytime I'm in my car, it connects to the Bluetooth of my car, it's gonna automatically launch a YouTube app and play the song that I was playing originally when I got in. So if you guys know how to do that, it's a little quick little setting for you. Now, moving on to clock face. Clock face is pretty straight to the point, nothing too crazy here. If you wanna change the clock style for the always on display or live stream, so we do always on display. This is something you can already do on your own. Clock face really didn't bring too much customability to it. I mean, it added a couple, a couple of new ones, but again, nothing like too, too crazy. Let's go ahead and check the theme store. And here are some new ones you can add to yourself, the ones you gotta pay for, but we'll leave that alone for right now. There's none I really want. And you can also do the same thing for the live stream. So we wanted to change the live stream to something like, we got some more in here. Let's see if they add some more in here. I actually forgot to do that on the other one. Um, so they add, they did add a couple more, as you guys can see, like right now, they, like I like this one here, that's pretty cool. And they got where only shows the minute of the hour. It's a quarter to one if you wanna read it straight like that, or if you wanna just be typed in Word. If you want it to align, if you want it to be centered, if you want it to be centered, align left, or align right, you can do that as well. So you hit apply, and boom, there you go. Now, 
this is one of this is a really good one to have, right? So what Multistar does is any app. Now you know how sometimes, like for example, like Instagram does not work on multitasking. Well, for any app on your phone that's not normally used to multitask or that can't do split screen, this actually enables it, right? So you can actually change the split screen color. It's going to use multi window without pausing, and then you have right here enable multi window to all apps, and then also pop up view action. Now, for some odd reason, in one UI, it seems like they took that feature away where you can no longer drag from the left and turn anything to a pop up. But when you, as you guys can see here, see right now it's not working without that on. But I feel like the little vibration of it doing it when I turn it on now. Got it to work. So pop up, it, it pretty much brings pop up view back to you. Um, now again, I said Instagram actually works and to kind of show you guys it's gonna swipe up and we got it to work. So you say app may not work on split screens you guys can see, but as you guys can see, it's working just fine. It, it may crash it, but Instagram does work with split screen now. Go ahead, slide that up and get rid of that. So again, any app that you wanna use and split screen, this definitely help you do it. Next we have Navstar. I don't use the navigation buttons on my actual device, so this doesn't really apply to me. But for those who are interested, you pretty much can set up any different row icons that you want, have like a little bit more custom customizability to it. You got new configuration if you wanna change the background color, anything like that. You got button layout if you want it to be a little bit more to the, to the right, to the left. Add a button if you wanted to, maybe you wanna add screen capture, internet screen off. These are good things for people who actually use the, the on-screen navigation button. So definitely come in there and play with that and check that out. Next, let's move over to family. So now family, from what I've seen, this may be new. I didn't see this on the last one. If I did, if I just missed it, let me know down in the comment section down below. But right now, this gives you this more control over the phone itself with customization. Now here, we're gonna take a look at Nice Catch. Now what Nice Catch does pretty much let you guys know if there's ever been a time where you had like a random vibration or your phone was doing something, you had no reason why I was doing it, this here will let you know. So for example, we go to vibration history, nothing's taking place yet. I don't have any weird vibration, but it gives you more of a history what's going on with your phone. So how many times your, your screen wake up history, your toast history, detect commercials, vibration history, ring mode history. So like around what time did you have this ringer on? Whatever the case is, this is something you wanna leave and start to actually check out your phone. And then you can also clear our history. So now we're gonna take a look at one hand operation. Pretty sure if you guys seen this before, it just kind of makes everything a little bit easier for you to like to use. I mean, like your keyboard, it adds just to the handles left and right side to do, uh, so you can control your phone easier for yourself. And these handles are right hand and left. You can change the transparency level of how uh, transparent you want them, advanced settings, right handle. If you want it to, if you want it to be a back key, a recent key, like these are pretty much good things to have if you wanna change, like, if you just wanna make your phone a little bit more one hand to use, so if you're always using a phone on right, like with your right hand, you go ahead and add a nice little big bar over here to control things that you normally have to use with two hands. All right, now let's take a look at edge lighting. Now, as you guys can see, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this edge lighting before, but you pretty much get more customability over how you want your edge lighting to be, the type of effect, if you want it to glow, galaxy, I like galaxy a lot, when you get a notification, that's how it pops up. You can loop it, celebrate, but I like Galaxy, you wanna take the Galaxy. And they also have a glow as well. And then you can change the color of it if you want to, the transparency of it, if you want it to be completely high, which I don't know why you want that. Or if you wanna be completely low so you actually see what you're getting yourself into when you get a notification. And here you actually change the color as well. If you wanna do a custom color, you wanna do like this type of green, you could do that too. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. And we just go from there. Very straight, very straightforward with that. It's not a huge review on that. Next one, we're gonna take a look at the last two, to be Edge Touch and Sound Assistant. Now, now with Edge Touch, this is more than likely help the people who are having issues with when you're holding a hand with one hand and your fingers are kind of pretty much still using the edge. You can actually set it up where um, you don't even want certain edge panels to be detected, right? You got the sensitive zone. So if you wanted to, do not show again, okay, da da da. You got an edge zone. So pretty much however you want it to be, adjust the block zone to prevent unintended touches. So if you want this to be a lot bigger, you could do that, right? So if you want it to be anytime you're holding your phone like this, as you guys can see, my hand is kind of like on those edges, so it, that, that's blocked. The only thing that's gonna be moving is the screen right here. You actually do have sensitive zone and sensitive zones. It gives you a pretty good walkthrough on how to do it. Uh, if you wanna edit it, how much you want, how much you want the uh, the, the zone to be, which, which zone you're okay with to be in, like it'll be up here in green. So if you want this zone up here to be okay, but not down here, you can do that too. All right, last but not least is Sound Assistant. Now with Sound Assistant, it pretty much gives you more control, a lot more control over your sound settings. And you can actually control individual app volume. So say for example, you know, when you go to YouTube, you want it to be at this volume specifically only. You don't want it to go no louder than this. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube and hit add. 
And so anytime you go into that app, it will know, like this is will be the value it automatically goes to. Okay, control media, you got the floating, uh, the floating button icon, so let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and play, play something real quick. So as you guys can see, it is definitely limiting the volume because the phone actually goes way louder than that. And there's the floating icon, you got sound assistant, you can change the equalizer if you wanted to, Adobe Atmos, you name it. You just, you just pretty much get like a lot more functionality and customizability with your, with your whole sound setup. Uh, period. You actually got the change step, the change step volume, advanced setups. Take a look at that. If you want a uh, mono audio or selfie stick, you want to play and record sound using your phone speakers, a microphone with the selfie stick is plugged in. Like that's pretty dope to have, especially if you're a vlogger with like with the with the selfie stick, you could do that. Um, you can reverse stereo swap the left and right audio outputs on headphones. I, I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but nonetheless, here sound balance, you name it, that like you you pretty much have full control over your audio at this point. So again, I don't really, that's not something I'm gonna use. I'm gonna make sure I turn it off if I end the video. So anyway, man, hope this is a very comprehensive review of Good Lock. If there's anything I missed, any questions you have, please let me know. I'll try to shorten this down, this video down as much as I can, but there's just a lot of information to kind of go over that I wanted to cover. So thanks for watching, it's your boy Sean Ben and I'm out. Deuces.